when will my adrenals recover? That's a question I hear all the time. I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and people just want to know, I've taken prednisone. When will my adrenal system come back? And specifically, they're asking about the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal system. It's this intricate system your body has created and prednisone hijacks it. So you want to know, when will my adrenal system recover? Well, I found a scientific article, finally, something that even hinted at an answer to that question, because there's no simple answer. So let's find out what the scientific article says about when your adrenal system recovers. So this article is actually about Cushing syndrome. So people who actually had naturally high cortisol levels, and by naturally, I mean their body made it instead of taking prednisone. So what I'm about to say doesn't quite fit in, except they had to take prednisone to taper down and not be in withdrawals. So these people did take prednisone, but they also had a little complication that doesn't apply to the rest of us. So let's find out what we can find that does apply to us. The article is titled Hypothalamic Pituitary Adrenal Axis Recovery After Treatment of Cushing Syndrome. And it's by a Dr. Belasco in Croatia. And so she talks about how when people take prednisone, it affects this whole adrenal system. And if people just suddenly stop taking prednisone and go cold turkey, then they might go into withdrawals. Just like you might go into withdrawals with like opioid drugs or benzodiazepines, you might go into withdrawals, which feel awful. And what do the withdrawals feel like while on prednisone? So it's technically called prednisone withdrawal syndrome or glucocorticoid withdrawal syndrome, same thing. And these are the symptoms that they outline. Fatigue, myalgia, decreased quality of life. Like life doesn't feel like it's worth living. Arthralgia, that's joint pain. And by the way, myalgia was muscle pain, depression, and anxiety. So you just feel awful. You might be like, wow, I feel like I have the flu. No, it's just prednisone withdrawal. There was a lady whose family thought she'd gotten COVID in the early days in New York City, back when there was no testing and you just were told to assume that you'd had COVID. And it turned out she had just gone through a prolonged and very miserable prednisone withdrawal syndrome. So, and why, what is causing this? It's called a relative decrease in serum glucocorticoid concentrations. That's basically medical use for you don't have as much steroids floating around in your blood and your blood says, "My, you have these little glucocorticoid receptors and they're saying, I'm empty, fill me up, fill me up and causes withdrawals. So what is actually causing those symptoms? They don't know for sure, but it could be the, the high cortisol leads to increased interleukin-6, and that makes you feel yucky. So if you were to get your cortisol tested, what would be a good number to indicate that your hypothalamic pituitary axis, your HPA axis, is recovering? And they suggested a number. I'm not sure where they got this number, but it was 10 micrograms per deciliter of cortisol in your blood if you measured in the morning. And... What if you're wondering, do I have adrenal dysfunction? Do I have a problem with my adrenal system? And they suggested two different options of how you could test that. The first option is called the short synacthin test. And they said, if you have over 420, then you might have adrenal dysfunction. Or number two was the ACTH stim test or a stimulation test. And that's just like triggering this whole system to kick into gear. And you'd measure the morning cortisol and you take a blood sample 24 hours after the last dose. People often ask that too. When should I have my blood tested? 24 hours is what they said after your last dose of prednisone. So if you took your last dose at 8 a.m. on Wednesday, then you could get your blood test 24 hours later at 8 a.m. on Thursday. And they said, if your morning cortisol is less than five, then you should remain on steroids like prednisone and retest in three to six months. Now that is specific to these people who have Cushing's syndrome, but I think that makes sense that if you're going through such withdrawals, you're so dependent on steroids, then remain on steroids and retest in three to six months. Everything I'm telling you, you should run past your doctor. Your doctor is the expert. 
and what could help predict HPA access recovery? They said the cumulative dose and duration of therapy. So however many milligrams of prednisone you've had over time and how long you've been on prednisone, they say that there's a relationship that the more and the longer, the harder it is for your adrenal system to recover. I'm not really sure if that's true or if that's just what people think. I'm not really sure. I don't actually see the proof, but that's their interpretation. So here is the punchline. How long does adrenal access recovery take? And this is another number that is not really based on a whole lot of evidence. And they said several weeks to years. Thank you for not helpful. <laughs> several weeks to years. Like who's the lucky ones at several weeks? Who's the unlucky ones that it's years? Nobody knows. Nobody's done the research yet. Hopefully. Someday we'll have that research done, but today is not that day. So when is your adrenal system going to recover? I don't know. And neither does anyone else. Ask your doctor to do research. Signing off. Just kidding. If you are struggling to taper, you're going through these withdrawals. I suggest downloading my prednisone taper chart. It shows you all of the options for how to taper. If you need to go quickly, it gives you an option for that. If you need to withdraw over a long period of time, it gives you exactly what to do and you can print it out and show it to your doctor. So just click the link below and to get your prednisone taper chart. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.